At the time of this recording, Ernie, Eric, and I estimate that there are about 200,000 to 300,000 rocket mass heaters built. The advantages are so massive. Why aren't there millions or tens of millions of these built? One reason, we think, is because it takes a certain amount of grit and do-it-yourself skill. This naturally leads to the discussion of what can be done to make this far easier. In the spring of 2012, Ernie, Eric, and I spent about three hours debating over designs for a shippable core. Our thinking is that if we come up with a good design, somebody could build a business selling shippable cores. And rocket mass heaters would finally hit the world big time. In October of 2012, we have a workshop featuring this new shippable core. We even have the prototype professionally packaged for shipment, complete with estimates on shipping costs. We then proceed to build a rocket mass heater in 44 minutes. In October of 2013, we held two rocket mass heater workshops and offered shippable core construction as part of the workshop. I focused on a sure thing design, something that would definitely work, but not pushing any amazing boundaries. This is what we now call the wood box style shippable core. Erica focused on designs where high temperature refractory cement could be poured into a mold. Ernie focused on designs where price is no object, with the idea that sometimes this path reveals lower priced options that we would otherwise never know about. At the 2013 workshops, Erica bought some stuff called fondue, a high temp refractory cement. She started off building a very basic and blocky form. She then moved on to using a basic blocky form that included fire brick on the inside. Then she went for her masterpiece, a large poured core that included a manifold. Note the ridge for the barrel. The design is that a barrel can be placed here without any gasket. As the ash builds, a better seal is created. <laughs> and you just tuck it down there and give it a minute. All right? You can see all of a sudden it starts pulling back. From what Erica has said, it says to first fire these in, it's supposed to hold 110C. After about a week of use, the core started showing more and more cracks. Eventually, the core had to be removed. You can see a lot of cracks where the pour was weakest. Pinched corners, where we cut the hole, etc. I was expecting expansion strain problems, but we also had cracks where there's no obvious expansion from the heat. We may just have frost cracking in the thick parts where it would have been wet on top of everything else. We created a steel reusable form. We also built a poor man's kiln. We called the manufacturer of fondue and some manufacturers of similar products. We tried the other one in the end. Every poured core failed in the same way. They would work great for a week and then the cracks would start to appear. By the spring of 2014, we stopped trying to build new portable cores and moved on to other projects. In September of 2014, Matt Walker arrived. He had built several cores using Sparlight 60 and decided to show us how he builds a poured core. You've got big pipe clamps too that could sit across that moment. Okay. So, it's probably going to be a little thick, 
And you said that we move it right here. Yep. These are little details where you can't get in a piece of paper. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can just see that if we left that in there and I built up that burn tunnel a little too high, you can see that we'd have a, uh, like a groove right there, right? Like if I left this board there, you know what I'm saying? It'd be cutting into there. You guys know, are you following me? I got you. Okay. Lewis, there's been issues with most of these portable cores, if not all of them. And so far, with two years of fairly continuous use, we put a camera in yesterday, had a look up inside the uh, the burn tunnel and the feed and the heat riser areas, and there's no, no cracking that we can see. So this unit is proving to be very durable. The first wood box style shippable core proved to be too small. The lack of insulation between the hot points and the wood led to charring of the wood. The second wood box style shippable core had a lot more insulation in the right spots and the result has been excellent. That shippable core is still in use and we have built two more that are quite similar. The important thing with this wood box style shippable core is that it worked great. After a few months, we renamed it from version 0.3 to version 1.0. At about that time, we realized that the riser wasn't quite tall enough, so Tony augmented the riser and the barrel rest. And the barrel goes on. This core has now been in use for about two and a half winters. Our first try with a ceramic core was in 2012. This highly insulative material is stiff enough to hold a shape and could be molded. For about $700, we received something shaped like a trough that would act as a wood feed and burn tunnel, plus a long tube that would act as the heat riser. The results were magnificent. We had the best burn we'd ever experienced and the fastest build time. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com, where we talk about rocket mass heaters, homesteading, and permaculture all the time. Mm -hmm.